It is Friday afternoon, folks. Ted Ralston here in our downtown Honolulu studio of uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Actually, we've moved the studio, as you can see, to Waimanao uh, for this particular show. And uh, joining me on the show today is by the route from uh, England uh, through Las Vegas to Honolulu is Andrew Dennis. Andrew, thanks for coming on board. Thanks for taking time out of your vacation here in Hawaii to spend some time with us at Think Tech. Thanks for having me on the show. Okay. Oh, the accent's still there, isn't it? You can't, uh, <laughs> yes. you can take the Englishman out of England, but you can't <coughs> take the accent out of the Englishman, this right? This is That's true. How it goes? Okay. <laughs> Part of the brain drain of England that is uh, benefiting us here in Hawaii through Las Vegas. Anyway, uh, we're here on a really interesting subject today. This is uh, where the drone leads. We normally have drone subjects, drone people, and I want to thank Mike Amoda for running the show last week when Margie and I were in Tucson and uh, not able to be here in person, but uh, uh, Micah took care of the, of the action last week. Thanks, Mike. Uh, we talk about drones, what they're useful for, how they're certified. We talk about all this technical stuff. But we have here today in Andrew the end state of what benefits might occur in certain cases associated with the information that's collected by a drone. Say we had a disaster or something like that going on or a tsunami coming through here. We have uh, buildings that are uh, deconstructed, we have um, uh, dams perhaps that have breached, we have uh, trees that are down and such power lines, and all this uh, uh, desolation after a, after a storm. That, that, and the drones are useful for going in there and getting pictures of that. We can then turn them into di uh, digital elevation models and get uh, uh, damaged pictures and such. Now we have to think about how we're going to get something restructured, something rebuilt, something back in place in order to start providing services and such. Water, electricity, certainly important, but physical structures are essential to everything. And uh, so the, uh, the utility of a, a very effective and low benefit barrier to entry type construction technology fits wonderfully in the disaster management domain. And that's where these drones play in. So you, Andrew, with uh, GigaCrete, the replacement for concrete, I might suggest, uh, have created a construction system that fits beautifully as the end state of actions that occur based on information collected in the disaster situation, say by a drone. So that's the lead in. Now you have to follow okay. with uh, how this all works. Back in the 80s, I made a trip to the Caribbean. This is the 1980s, not the 1980s. 1980s. So I could say 1880s, and the people all know I was around at that time. <laughs> oh, I think time. I'm older than you. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, let's, let's, let's compare notes here. I remember when the Earth just crusted over. Do you remember those days? I think I've forgotten that. Ah, See, that okay, shows my it's still age. active in my mind. <laughs> Back in the 80s, I visited a few different Caribbean islands, fell in love with five and decided I wanted to build a vacation home there. But I was an architect in Southern California at the time, and I thought, I'll make it there, but it has to be green. So green, cool, green, green. Okay. as in eco-friendly. Eco-friendly, OK. Since 1984, I've been an environmental architect. I've avoided using wood. Definitely don't use Portland cement. As a giant CO2 producer, if you don't know this, you probably do, but one ton of cement makes one ton of CO2. One ton of cement, one ton of CO2. A greenhouse gas. Okay. That then challenges all the amoeba in the ocean to ingest all that stuff and turn it into oxygen. Correct. What came out of that was I couldn't find the materials, didn't want to use wood, didn't want to use gypsum board. It had to be mold and mildew resistant, which took both of those two items out. It had to be 200 mile an hour hurricane rated, manhandleable, loaded in a container, and assembled in five days where you could live it in the building within seven days, simply because I'd never had a two-week vacation. Okay, these are your self-generated so, specifications because yes. of your own personal interest and, and need, and your, your, so rapidity, durability, simplicity, green, and not dependent on trees or Portland cement right. were the main criteria. What, how different would those criteria be here for, for Hawaii, for Oahu here? It wouldn't be any different. It wouldn't be any different, same thing. Right. right, now, I intended to fly out there, get maybe four or five guys locally, assemble it and build it. These are untrained, unskilled, or low-skilled workers. And the only final skill needed was the final finish on it. And almost every country in the world, or every, just about every location, has someone that's capable of handling a trowel, either in a, a stucco application or a plaster, or even a cement finishing. So well, basically, people who can be trained in, in, on the job relatively quickly with, yes. with straightforward tools. How different is that from post-disaster recovery? It's about the same, isn't it? It's very simple. So this is a very right. good an an analogy to what would occur and what would be beneficial after right. a disaster. Now, the important part in all of this would be we have a very lightweight building system that's extremely strong. 
to a point where we can actually uh, put finishes on the building, interior or exterior, that are bullet resistant. We have a product called Ballisticrete, which is now military approved, U.S. government approved, National Institute of Justice approved. So this, this new concrete material just applied thicker then right. becomes... Let's call it a plaster instead of a concrete. When you okay. say concrete, <laughs> okay. everyone I'll, thinks foundations... I will evict concrete from my vocabulary. Right. How's that? And concrete is also always uh, Portland cement based as the binder. Okay, so what do we call this? Gigacrete. Gigacrete. How about Gigacrete. that? Gigacrete. What, what more can you say? <laughs> yeah, it's really three products. Plastamax is the interior fire rate coating over foam, all natural ingredients, everything in it edible, everything food grade, non toxic. The interior non allergenic, yes. non, non harmful in any way. And 9,300 9, psi. Way more than Portland cement based products. Exterior wise, Stucco Max, totally waterproof, even under a head pressure of five feet of water, so the place is flooded. Uh, the tests we've got in the lab, which actually you've seen in Las Vegas. Um, are now will be five years old in March with no water penetration. So you get a column of water, as I recall, five feet high that right. has to evaporate, so you have to replenish it time to time. And right. that water <coughs> is trying to push its way through a it's diaphragm trying of trying to of uh, in quarter, uh, le actually less than quarter of an inch, three sixty. It, it hasn't so. in five years. It hasn't made it yet. It hasn't made it yet. Mm -hmm. Right. If I were the water, so, I'd probably try to look at something else to do with my life. I think they're choosing evaporation. <laughs> that would be a better deal. All right. So. To discuss what you, your first question was, what would the application be after, after a disaster? It right. would be a rapid deployment. It would be the, even the homeowners that have lost their own place could actually be building their own home again. Well, step one is we go in there with a drone and pick up the imagery of what's going on. Right. That, from that we can determine access and the nature of damage and where we can stash materials and such and issues where <coughs> there could be potential landslides you want to stay away from. So we find our a path of least resistance in mm -hmm. and allow the materials to come in. Then you bring the materials in or arrange to have the materials right. brought in, which are easily handled and easily uh, turned into uh, a, a building structure. Within and manufactured locally here in Hawaii. Manufactured right here and or on any island situation right. as, as the case may be. And, and pre-engineered in a sense, that is the design and the loads and all that sort of thing, the load pass and the ability to withstand loads, that's all built into the design. All pre-calculated. So in the field, the field people don't have to do anything with calculations or with uh, measurements for that matter. Right. Just basically follow the, the implicit instructions which are created by channels you've cut into foam. And the shapes. And the shapes. So every building has a corner. As an example, this is our six inch thick expanded polystyrene panel. This would be eight feet, nine feet, or ten feet long. So it's not a block. This appears to be a block. It's just a six inch sample. Next to every connector, and a connector is two steel studs. So each stud is a two by four, two become a four by four. So every time one shape connects to the next, you've got a four by four construction. So we have a steel frame carrying the main loads all pre-engineered and pre-designed and the channels that the steel <coughs> goes in are set distance apart in the foam by channels. Yes. So you simply find something that matches the shape and stick it in with the right length. Right. Here's a tiny model. This is a okay. 3D plastic model showing the corner, which is this one. A T. A T is obviously an intersecting wall where another wall abuts. And then the panels in between of one foot all the way up to four feet and increments of those numbers. So you design the, you want to make the design optimum by having, by reusing those standard panels, fours and eight foot panels. Preferably. We can okay. make custom panels, but, okay. but ideally. For if, simplicity, you want to go with those, use those panels. Yes. And the they rock. range from one, two, three, four, in increments okay. of pretty much a one foot increments. So it means the building can go up very, very quickly. And it, you can see what's happening. By the people who are going to live there. By who? Exactly. Our, our emergency, emergency staff crew can get there. Right. But here. you don't have to be a trained journeyman carpenter or something like that right. to go build this. You can do it with uh, whatever skills you bring to the party. Right. If you can get to the site, you can help with the construction. Right. Got it. We ship these all over the world. One of the first ones to ever go in was to Haiti. Uh, the instructions, unfortunately, I wrote in English, not realizing they couldn't mm. read, nor, nor it, was, it wasn't French or Creole. Um, and it took them two days longer than it should have because of that. So what you can see here is going on is we're not building with the stud first, we build with the insulation. And the insulation determines where the structural com components drop in. So now it's unskilled labor or low skilled labor to actually drop that in and then pass a screw straight through the foam to connect this to the top and bottom tracks.
actually integralize the structure by screws, uh, but they're simply installed, and you actually the foam can keep the screw lined up with the exactly. with the driver quite well. Right. So the foam is actually not carrying any load. It's acting not as a built-in tooling, in effect. Right. And the tooling happens to have insulation capabilities. Exactly. It happens to have the design measurements built into it. So the tooling is a, a very effective way to take the all the time is spent in measurements on site and such and cutting you know they say measure twice and cut once to right. make sure you don't cut all done it's in all the gone. factory <laughs> it's all we done have, right we have a factory tolerance of less than a sixteenth of an inch mm -hmm. so you start in in a corner go all the way around and the last two pieces that come together you slide the connector down and it fits perfectly and you could sit there actually uh, in the afternoon of the first day with the drone and go supervise the uh, 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 survey the area, pick up the any information that that is needed back uh, back at headquarters, mm -hmm. uh, transmit the data back there. And here's what it looks like. Okay, so what you guys thought this was going to look like. Here's what actually showed up. Uh, notice where we have the material distributed. Notice where uh, the construction is going on, and you could tie together the construction site. Or we could say, hey, yeah. stop putting the window there. That's the door. Okay, <laughs> right, okay, you could certainly you want to make sure that's going to be correct. So that's cool. So you have, a, uh, obviously, a well-thought-through, ordered, structured system here that all came from your own personal desire to put up a, 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 a vacation, vacation time home. assemblable vacation home in the Caribbean. Right. And uh, nothing about what you've done is, is, is different <clears throat> here in Hawaii. Exactly. And Ideally suited for islands. Islands are typically a lot more expensive. Everything has to be brought in. Uh, in this particular case here in Hawaii, being a much larger island, it makes sense to actually put a manufacturing facility okay. here to supply the local and, and not get trapped in the Jones Act with this horrendous shipping cost. So from, instead of bringing in the foam in its expanded form, bring in the resin and blow the foam blocks here. Yes. That's a much more efficient way to cut them here, it. roll yep. foam here, yep. create the patented connectors. connectors. Um, and ultimately we'll make the, the coatings here. So what we would do in the workforce thinking process here is the workforce would be moved from the job site back into the factory situation, the workforce being folks who are doing the calculations and such on the various designs and also running the factory operations. And so that skilled labor ends up in the, in the shop and the local labor, the, the on-site labor, ends up t taking place at the site with basically me as a homeowner or mm -hmm. my friends or something like that with a supervisor of some kind and we could actually put this together sure. on site. We also see not just natural disaster, that's a limited market here, but housing, homeless, um, it's definitely affordable housing for Hawaii, no question. We can do it less expensive than the way you're doing it now. Let, let's, that's a really important, important message, I want to make sure everybody hears. Let's pick up that and talk about it in more detail after our first break. Okay. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad! Merry Christmas, everybody! Feliz Navidad! Prospero año y felicidad! I want to wish you a Merry Christmas! I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter and I am the host of Power of Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians or artists to see how we can come together to make a renewable future Tuesdays at 1 p.m. It is still a Friday afternoon folks Friday evening hasn't hit yet uh, Ted Ralston here hosting our show where the drone leads the drone leads in this case to some quite incredible technology that could come after the drone has done its work and the desire to reconstruct something after a disaster or in my case just a plain rebuilding of my house would come in. We have Andrew Dennis here from Las Vegas, uh, CEO of uh, Gigacrete Inc. Founder. Founder. I have someone else who's the CEO. Okay. Founder <coughs> and inventor of right. the uh, quite incredible integrated construction technology. You know, we talked about the the foam being the the, the um, 
the tooling in effect with all the engineering built into it and then the structure goes in in obvious locations and the wiring and plumbing would go in where they fit but on the outside you're going to have a coating on the outside right. of this which is is that load carrying that coating load carrying it is but we don't count it engineering wise all the engineering is done so all through the conventional is, steel framing okay. there's a page in the book for the building code that has this in it but the coating on the outside does add to the load bearing absolutely. capability of the structure yeah and, and certainly impact. the impact <laughs> yeah hurricane and wind resistance so you'll have a <clears throat> an inch thermal barrier here between any steel and the external right. uh, atmosphere environment and then on top of that external foam goes the external coating right and that's one of the greatest inventions you made is that in external coating which we're not going to call the c word concrete anymore right, right? we're going to call it stucco max stucco max which would be the external configuration right and plaster max would be the internal configuration right. but it, it's all Describe what's, what it is. Difficult to say in just a few words. And, and of course, let me start with this. Everything in both bags, Stuccomax or Plastamax, which are mixed on site, are all food grade. They're all edible ingredients. You've eaten every single one of them. I can't tell you what they are. But obviously, that's interesting. Proprietary property. rights are completely acceptable. Right. 9300 PSI interior Plastamax was really designed to be the first fire rated finish replacing gypsum board. Um, so we passed all the NFPA uh, fire tests and the uniform building. So we don't have to bring any gyp board into Hawaii Absolutely anymore. not. Okay. Yeah, That's nasty great. stuff. Yeah, it is. Especially in a humid environment. Um, Stucco Max, so one's really fire rated and very high impact and uh, abrasion and scratch resistant. Um, almost zero maintenance. In fact, if you want to hang a picture, you can't knock a nail in it. It'll bend the nail, but you can use um, a drywall screw that's designed to go through our material into a steel stud. And just on the coating alone, only 3 sixteenths or 5 millimeters thick, it will support 70 pounds of weight. And if you want a stud behind that, a couple hundred pounds, right? Exactly, yeah. right. So TVs, big okay. TVs and kitchen cabinets find the studs, which we normally do with wood framing. Now, mm -hmm. exterior-wise, Stucco Max is a waterproof finish. Both use natural limestone, calcium carbonate, plenty of it on this island. Mm -hmm. um, calcium carbonate is um, basically the, the raw ingredient in Tums, an acid buffer for your stomach. It's edible sand. So you can eat your house if you had a, a, a bad... You'll have to have really strong teeth. Okay. <laughs> Even your concrete-eating termites cannot no. get through this stuff. <laughs> all right, okay. I like to know that. That's great because with all your termites out there, you're done, right? No more, no more food. <laughs> Find more. another house. <laughs> or die trying. Um, so really, the, the, the coatings are the final encapsulation of the house. So there's no seam lines. What, obviously, our individual panel pieces have seam lines. And in the U.S., um, modular housing or prefab housing had a bad rap for a long, long time. Because of seams. Post-war. Yeah. Okay. And it was considered cheap housing after World War II. So the younger architects are actually enjoying the fact that prefab, they know nothing about it from their previous generation. Uh, their fathers did, but they don't. So it's a new thing for them. So a lot of young, modern, uh, minimalist architects are actually purposely designing prefab houses with all these joint lines in it. We can make it look like mm -hmm. that if you want, but we really don't well, why want not? that. Why not? Why? Right. Yeah, right. But so, crawling over the the the, ex, the, the, the uh, structural uh, joints in the in the in the foam, that seam line is, is eliminated. Is completely taken away, right? So everything's encapsulated. You end up with a monolithic coat on the outside okay. that's very Which very. Which is strong. carrying load. Cool. So you have a load-bearing external shell, which adds to the strength of the steel frame. The steel frame is all the one you've had to calculate, and we've had trouble in the past. I shouldn't say trouble, but high expense in trying to put a, uh, and understand the load through a monolithic structure without the seal frame because it takes an FEA analysis and that's a complicated process by a specialist to get and that done. And there's no page in the building code book nope. so the inspector is going to give you a bad time. Okay, so the steel frame takes care of that problem. Right. In fact, double studs no. code calls for one stud every two okay. feet. We're dealing with 4x4, four 2x4, four, 4x4. Four four. Okay. Way beyond uniform building code. So we have the strength, we have the easy assembly, we have the uh, easy shipment in. We don't consume any trees. We don't right. consume any uh, uh, Portland cement in the process. Right. And um, we don't li load up the landfill then 50 years later with all that material right. that has to be uh, uh, taken care of somehow. Right. 
and everything we use is recyclable. Yeah, everything, and then it, uh, and you have the fireproof interior and the uh, basically weather, weather resistant exterior. Weather, and it, the weather could include, if the weather happened to include bullets, you can put this stuff on really thick yes. and deflect them as well. Yes. So you can make this thing into a bank if you wanted to to keep the 37 millimeter from going through. Or a safe room. A in safe any room. House. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Think of a renovation material, or if a lot of people now are turning closets and things within the you know, something mm -hmm. that doesn't have a window into a safe room. Okay, so you could, within a house, you could have a hard zone that yes. is it, it, it is impervious to anything that anybody wants to bring to it. Yes. And what, but what this all really says is the simplicity, <clears> the <throat> uh, the lack of, or the total greenness and the lack of uh, putting landfill full of, of timber and such, lack of cutting on the site, all that stuff, the ability to use uh, 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 in-place labor, that sounds like a great plan or great position or great way to go forward in the case of dealing with our broad uh, problem with houseless people here. Yes. We call them homeless sometimes, but we prefer to call them houseless because they really have a home. It's just not a home like we're used to. Mm -hmm. So we need to find a way to get them a home that we're used to. And this would give you that opportunity and they could even participate in the Absolutely fabrication. Absolutely they could. And there's nothing in here that can hurt anybody. There's right. no, uh, no chemicals that would be of any there's, a, I think, a, a, a drill gun to shoot drills and, or shoot, Actually, shoot screws in. Cordless screw gun. Cordless screw gun is the total tool required here mm -hmm. and probably a... Uh, um, uh, Actually, for the anchors through the bottom we track, we use yeah. an electric drill and drill down and then put an expansion anchor or an epoxy anchor into the concrete. So low cost, locally assemblable <laughs> by the people who are going to use it. Uh, fully functional, stronger than a conventional frame structure, much more uh, environmentally friendly and probably a lot more pleasant to live in because you have the insulation value of the thermal insulation right. and uh, the uh, sea air, which as you know is a very big concern on the seacoast, and noise is kept out as well. Right. We have a high STC value of 52. Um, our second home that we've <coughs> built in the Caribbean survived uh, two hurricanes. The last one was 155 mile an hour sustained winds for two hours in Exuma, Bahamas. Uh, and that particular client has documented 60% energy savings. Okay. And after the 155 with 200 gusts, we're told, um, they have zero damage, no leaks whatsoever in the house. So here in Hawaii, uh, reduced air conditioning costs would be something that people would measure right away. As, as 60%. As, as 60%, folks as well as, uh, Hiko, are you listening? As well as, uh, as uh, much more comfortable internal uh, environment. Mm -hmm. uh, ventilation to take would, would, would be functional in terms of uh, taking care of uh, air movement and stuff like that, which you can arrange through windows and louvers and such. Right. So you, got a, or you could put together a very comfortable place that anyone would be very happy to live in. And affordable. And affordable, that's the best part. Affordable and your sweat equity can go into it in terms of uh, participation in the construction. Then it's really affordable. Yeah. Right, and uh, and the weight looks like it's going to be a bit lighter than a conventional structure. A little bit lighter than a typical wood frame house, mm -hmm. and I'm glad you brought this up because also sharing the same electrical conduit is an all thread that actually goes into the foundation, comes up all the way through and connects to the roof. So now we tighten it down. Think head bolts mm -hmm. on a car engine where you're pulling the head mm -hmm. into okay. the block. Now we're pulling the lightweight building material, making it really heavy after you've lifted it. So you got basically through bolts all the way from the foundation to the roof structure. Yes, and so we the pull the roof into the ground. Mm -hmm. The only way that roof's coming off is the whole thing's got to come so out. So the ground has to go with it. And exactly. And, and you have to bring up all of Kailua when you uh, right. had a strong windstorm <laughs> out there in Kailua Bay. So that's great. So uh, we got to figure out a way to uh, get a demonstration unit here of some kind that mm -hmm. people can participate in, can walk into, can even help make and have uh, uh, have a celebration here about uh, low cost, affordable, but not unpleasant. I mean, totally pleasant, totally comfortable accommodations for people, mm -hmm. and and take houseless people and make them not houseless people. Right. And uh, uh, but not in a way that is is industrial. In a way that's very friendly. In a way that's very comfortable. And uh, you, you, what you provided here is something that does that, and is also green, which the world and the state ought to care about. We also found in the, uh, the Haiti house that the people that built the house took more pride afterwards because they participated oh. in the construction of it and they take good care of it.
Well, you know, I was thinking about that. Uh, the, what, I, I wish uh, Mike, uh, Mike Amoto was here, and we'll get him on. we will have to meet him sometime. But Mike Amoto is uh, helping me on the, the drone world in, in, in that area. And what we find is that community involvement through educational system and the kids talking to their parents and that word of mouth um, education that goes on uh, is, a, is an essential part of any new technology coming into the business. Same thing would be true here. If we have people involved in fabricating their <coughs> own structure and kids, I'm just imagining here, but kids in the educational system can go through architecture training or something or even software training and they could, op they could end up in the design side of this business in the, in the shop. I'm glad you brought this up. In our overseas factories that we're putting in, in different continents, uh, there, there should be five or six, maybe even more next year going in. We're actually creating an alliance with the local technical college or university, okay. or at least schools. Um, and part of that process is not only teaching architects who are not being taught in green materials, it's also teaching um, application of materials, how to color it, how to create different finishes in it, they will be panel installers. It could even be factory workers. Uh, what we call a mega factory that will produce as many as 36,000 houses a year uh, is creating about 6,000 jobs so, in the field. Jobs and local employment and a local high-tech industry can actually follow from this. Right. And something we need here. So you don't have to cancel the rest of your vacation. And we got people at the community college to talk to. We've got people all over the city council to talk to. So Andrew. Um, We'll, uh, we'll get a hold of uh, Marilyn and have her, have her alter your reservations and have you return in February rather than in, in December. But thanks for coming on the show today. This has been a fascinating education Thank for you, me Ted. and seeing Thank how this all much. works. And uh, it all ties back to <clears throat> our good uh, theme on this show, which is where the drone leads. In this case, the drone leads to a really incredible reconstruction capability, which could also be a primary construction capability in the first place. Thanks for having me. Once again, Andrew, thanks, thanks so much for having me on the show. For coming on the show. Thank okay. you.